Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and today I want to talk to you guys about 1975's Strip Nude for Your Killer. Yeah, this video is going to get demonetized. Now, this is partially going to be a review of the movie as well as a review of the new Arrow Video Blu ray release. And Strip Nude for Your Killer is a really odd little movie because it's as if the director only had enough money to make one movie. But he was torn. On one hand, he really wanted to direct a murder mystery giallo. On the other hand, he really wanted to make a softcore movie. So he said, screw it. I'm going to cross pollinate both genres and strip nude for your killer was born. However, unfortunately, the murder mystery giallo aspects of the film are only halfway realized. The uh, softcore elements of the film aren't all that arousing. So you've really just got, and I apologize for using this phrase, a half-cocked, softcore, murder mystery giallo. And the plot for the movie could not be any more self-explanatory based on the title of the film. You've got a bunch of women, they get naked, and they get dead courtesy of a killer wearing a black biker outfit and a biker's helmet. At the center of all this nudity and murder is a super sleazy photographer who sleeps with all of his models and he thinks it's really funny to choke women. Uh, there are two different women in the film that he begins to choke. And when they're like, Hey, wait, what are you doing? Stop that. Stop that. He's like, I'm just joking around. And he is supposed to be the protagonist. So really there are no likable characters in this entire movie. And as a matter of fact, most of the characters in the movie are completely interchangeable because it's like new dead model one, new dead model two, new dead model three. Now, as far as the, the murder mystery giallo aspects of the movie, there's, there's nothing really special here that we haven't seen before and done much, much better. You've got the biker clad uh, killer going around picking people off. The kills aren't anything special. Um, and the, uh, the frame of the killer definitely gives away the gender of the killer, but the movie attempts to cover that up by having, uh, what is obviously a man breathing very heavily, um, on the soundtrack of the film. So you've got a very feminine, a uh, person uh, playing the killer who's breathing very heavily and it's clearly a man breathing very heavily to try and, you know, pull the wool over uh, our eyes. And when the killer is unmasked, I, I, I was like, who is that? Who? I, what, what do they have to do with anything? And then when you see what the killer's motivations are, the protagonist in the film it just makes him an even worse person than he already is. It's odd because the lead in the movie is honestly the most despicable character in the movie. Now, as far as the, the soft core elements in the movie, they're not arousing at all. Really? It was very, very cringy. Um, at least in my opinion, there's one sequence in the film uh, and it's as if it was taken straight from a Harvey Weinstein Me Too testimonial in which you have a character, a, a man who is, picture him, he's about 5'5", 275. He spends most of this sequence in just a pair of tidy whitey underwear, a huge pair of tidy whitey underwear that look like a diaper. He looks like he's running around in a diaper. So he brings this beautiful woman back to his home, basically drags her into his home. And when he realizes that he can't forcibly have his way with her, that she is stronger physically than he is, he resorts to begging and pleading in the most pathetic display that I've ever seen in movies. And it only gets more pathetic because finally the woman's like, okay, let's, let's do the deed. Let's get this over with. And literally it ends before it gets started for this guy. He's then crying for his mother because he can't perform. The lady finally leaves. He continues to walk around his house 
in just the tidy whitey undies that look like a diaper, he goes into his bedroom and pulls out from a drawer a blow-up doll. And he says, oh, baby, you're the only one that could do it for me. To the blow-up doll. And starts to blow up the blow-up doll. Because the blow-up doll is the only woman that can do it for him. Now, the movie is definitely cheesy. There's a lot of... <laughs> the acting is off uh, here and there. The dubbing is definitely off um, here and there. There's some... I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that's lost in translation. There's a sequence in which the our, our despicable protagonist... He comes home to this absolutely beautiful woman who greets him with just hugs and kisses and she's all over him. And then she's like, hey, come look at this. And he's like, well, you, you can't just do that and, and run off and leave me. It's going to hurt my corpuscles. What? Now, I definitely can't recommend strip nude for your killer uh, unless you are a giallo uh, purist and you have to watch every giallo movie that was ever made. Uh, but even then, I think you're probably going to be let down by <laughs> strip nude for your killer. Um, the giallo elements in the film aren't that great. The uh, softcore elements in the film aren't that great either. You've just got an odd mixture of the two genres that probably shouldn't have been mixed in the first place. Uh, as for the Blu-ray release for the film, um, I can't tell you anything about the presentation or the packaging. Arrow sent me a check disc uh, for the purposes of this review. As far as the picture quality and sound quality are concerned, uh, I give the picture quality a solid four out of five. The movie looks really good. As far as the audio quality, I'd give it probably a four and a half out of five. The movie sounded very good. As far as the extras are concerned, First up, we have Sex and Death with a Smile. It's 23 minutes and two seconds in length. It's a new video essay by author and critic Kat Ellinger on giallo and sex comedy icon Edwig Fenech. Uh, Ms. Ellinger discusses Ms. Fenech's impact on the giallo and sex comedy genres in Italy during the 60s and 70s. Very interesting. Uh, essay here from Miss Ellinger. Uh, next up, we have A Good Man for the Murders. It's 14 minutes and 32 seconds in length. It's a newly edited archival interview with actor Nino Castelnuovo. Uh, Mr. Castelnuovo discusses his career in film and working with such directors as Lucio Fulci, whom he calls incredibly smart and as fierce as they come. Uh, he discusses Strip Nude for Your Killer and how the director would only do a, a couple of takes uh, of each scene and that kind of shows, uh, and much more. Very nice interview with Mr. Castel, Nu Castel, <laughs> Castel Nuovo. Next up, we have The Blonde Salamander. It's 18 minutes and 30 seconds in length. It's a newly recorded interview with actress Irva Schurer. Uh, Ms. Schurer discusses working as a model and in theater before being cast in her first film. She discusses her sequence with the guy in the big diaper uh, in Strip Nude for Your Killer um, and uh, discusses how he smelled a little ripe while they were shooting that sequence. God bless her. God bless her. Uh, Miss Scher describes the director of strip mood for your killer as very elusive and not very personable while making the film. Very nice interview with Ms. Schreuer. Uh, next up, we have The Art of Helping. It's 44 minutes and 18 seconds in length. It's a new, it's a newly recorded interview with assistant director, uh, Daniele Sangiori. Uh, Mr. Sangiori discusses his career as an assistant director uh, and the movie business in Milan during the 1970s. He discusses the making of Strip Nude being a very stressful, particularly for the actresses, and much more. Next, we have Jack of All Trades. It's 21 minutes and 50 seconds in length. It's a newly recorded interview with actor and production manager Tino Palingi. Uh, Mr. Palingi discusses how the producers of Strip Nude for Your Killer were lovingly referred to as the Lie Brothers. Uh, he tells several colorful stories from behind the scenes uh, during the making of a Strip Nude for Your Killer, which is very interesting. Very, very nice, very entertaining interview with Mr. Palingi. Uh, we get the Italian theatrical trailer, we get the English theatrical trailer, and we get an image gallery. We also get an audio commentary with David Flint, editor of Reprobate Press, and Adrian Smith, owner and editor of Horrorpedia.com and the author of Blood and Black Lace. I listened to about 25 minutes of the commentary for the film. Uh, very interesting, very entertaining commentary. They talk a lot about uh, giallo films of this era. They talk a lot about, uh, you know, uh, uh, Strip Nude for Your Killer and its soft core leanings. 
etc., etc. But very entertaining commentary, at least for the about 25 minutes that I listened to. This is a very nice Blu-ray release for Strip Nude for your killer from Arrow Video. If you're a fan of the movie, you definitely want to look into picking up this Blu-ray and adding it to your collection. You've got some really nice extras. The picture quality and the sound quality are both very nice as well. Uh, I can't recommend the movie otherwise, though, but if you're a fan, you definitely want to look into picking up this Blu-ray. If you've seen Strip Nude for your killer, please let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you're not following me on social media those links are in the description and also right around here as always thanks so much for watching i really appreciate it take care and until next time peace join the a buck a month club and help support my channel on patreon thank you to my current patrons kevin smythe orc 145626 b movie mike robert sobel turi delamore stephen flanagan Lori holt mitch odell farron sutton craig farron jeremiah lambert grindhouse grotto joseph charlesworth chris earls Derek janna demon waffles simon clark stone gasman zachary barton mr bibby 86 james welch eli geisler jeff overing alan scott kyle mcguire jay the stingray lauren Dick Dixon, Travis Davis, Dave Barnes, Jonathan Lundy, Chris Parsons, Chris Gonzalez, Trenton Bowser, and Jason Brattenback. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.